Suppose. Now let's discuss briefly a concept in particle physics known as resonance of particles or simply resonance. So let's suppose we take some type of particle, let's say the pion, and we allow those pions to interact with protons. So we have some type of proton source, let's say the hydrogen atoms, and we bombard those protons, those hydrogen atoms, with pions. How exactly will the, will the pion and the proton interact with one another? So this is the question that the Italian physicists Enrico Fermi try to answer. So basically, if we examine the equation that describes this interaction, we see that the pion interacts with the proton to produce back the pion and the proton. So at least, according to this equation, it seems as if nothing takes place. No interaction actually takes place between the proton and the pion. But this is not actually the case. If we take a closer look, if we examine the following graph that describes on the y-axis the number of pions interacting with the protons and on the x-axis the energy, the kinetic energy of those interacting pions, we get the following curve. Now, Enrique Fermi basically deduced from this curve the following information. He said that what this hill actually represents is the interacting protons and pions. So this value designates the number of incident pions that are actually interacting with the protons. And when this interaction takes place momentarily, a new particle is formed. Now this particle exists for, for such a short period of time that we cannot actually observe this particle and that's exactly why we don't show it in this state. So basically this particle is very unstable and it decays instantaneously. It decays very very quickly. So once again the hill indicates that the majority of of the pions actually do interact with the protons momentarily to form a new particle. However, this particle is short-lived and it decayed back to our pion and proton. So we see these do combine momentarily and that is shown by this hill. And we see, uh, signify this new particle with a delta letter. So delta signifies our resonant particle. And this process of these two combining momentarily and then decaying back to the pion and proton is known as resonance. So basically, if we examine this hill, what this hill actually tells us, if we go half the height, this energy difference basically tells us how much energy is not conserved when these two particles interact with one another. So we can determine or we can use this graph to approximate the energy. So based on this graph, this is about 100 mega electron volts of energy and using this we can use the uncertainty principle to calculate for how long that particle actually exists. So we see that the width of the curve at about half its height is related to the lifetime of this delta particle. And to determine how long the delta particle remains before decaying, we can apply the uncertainty principle. So we can use this graph to determine what the delta E is in our uncertainty principle equation. So delta E multiplied by delta T is approximately equal to H divided by 2 pi, where delta E is the amount of energy that is, on, uh, that is not conserved over a time period of delta T, which corresponds to how long it takes the delta particle to actually decay. So if we solve for delta T, we see that delta T is equal to this equation. We can plug in our H constant, our energy of 100 mega 
electron volts, so we have to convert to joules, so we multiply the 100 mega electron volt by 10 to the 6 and then multiply that by 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 and we get the following quantity so 6.6 .6 times 10 to negative 24 seconds so this is how long the delta particle exists before actually undergoing that decay and we see that this period is a very very short interval now, what exactly determines the lifetime of our particle? What determines how long or short this time interval is? So, we see that the lifetime of any particle is determined by the force that causes or initiates that decay. So, basically, if we have a very strong force, such as the strong nuclear force that causes that decay, we see that this quantity will be very, very small. However, if the force is a weak force, such as the weak nuclear nuclear force, we see that this will be smaller. Now in the case of this reaction, when these two particles combine to form the delta particle, we see the other protons in the picture basi <coughs> basically <coughs> 